Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. It's Brie. <laughs> Thank you so much for tuning in to another episode recap. And as always, I'm here to discuss Ready to Love Season 9, Episode 5, titled Pajama Jam. All right, y'all, let's get into it. So we start this episode off with the guys meeting up with Tommy, you know, at their lounge because you know they're about to have guy talk. And Justin arrives at the lounge to meet all the men. So, of course, you know, <laughs> the men are eyeing him up and down like, you know how guys are, just basically trying to gauge who he is. And I don't think some of them were too happy that another dude came into the mix because it's kind of like competition. So they're like, mm, who's this dude? But anyway, so Tommy joins them. They all sit down and Tommy informs them that Leyland will no longer be a part of the journey because you guys know on the last episode, she decided to leave. She just had like, you know, family, personal matters to handle. So I guess it was just too much for her at the time to, you know, go through the process and also, you know, deal with her family matters. So yeah, so some of them were kind of disappointed about that. So anyway, so Tommy lets them know that they're going to have a pajama jam party with the ladies this week. And so Tommy lets them know that this party is all about intimacy and chemistry. And so he basically wants everybody to mix and mingle so that, you know, maybe they can establish a deeper connection on those two, you know, top levels. So we'll see what happens, y'all. So in a new scene, we see Dominique meet up with Alexis at a stretch lab, you know, for a cute little date, right? So they greet each other. They start talking and having a good time. And then the scene jumps over to Laron where he's going on a date with Vanessa. So we learn that on their date, they're actually outside. They're at some lake or something and they're going paddle boarding. So they both get into the water, they get on their paddle, and LaRon falls in the water. So he was like, y'all, I am not here for it. I don't know how to paddle board. And we start, we, I'm sorry, y'all. Then we start seeing them do yoga on the paddle board. So I don't know what was up with that. That was interesting. So that was funny. So then we jump back on over to see Dominique and Alexis and they're talking and she asked him, you know, how do you feel about the process so far? So he says, you know, it's been expedited. You know, this is a dating journey. It's been expedited. Um, but I want to enlighten, you know, somebody's load and I want them to lighten my load, you know, vice versa. So Alexis says that he reminds her of her dad because he's very action based and you can tell their connection is kind of growing. You know, I, I really wasn't expecting this couple, but that was interesting to see. So you can tell, you know, they're kind of feeling each other out or whatever. And I could kind of see something. So even Dom said in his confessional that he can see their connection growing. So that was pretty cool. That was unexpected, but you know. So next, y'all, back on over to Vanessa and Laurent's date. She lets him know that she has to get used to all of the dating options that she has right now. And he says that he's built a profile for everyone in regards to finding out what they like and what they don't like. So they're just sitting down, um, I guess, in some type of chair. And Vanessa lets him know that she did hear that he goes out so many times during the week. So Laurent is like, oh gosh, here we go. Because y'all know he always gets labeled as the party boy. So when she lets him know that, he starts laughing and he says, you know, look, I work from home, I live alone, and you know, I need to socialize. So when I need to do that, I go to lounges and I go out to eat with my friends. And so he says that, you know, he wants people to see the other side of him because he's not a party boy. And so in his confessional, he says that he feels like a disconnect with her. And I'm trying to figure out why he's saying that because, I mean, she was just asking him, I feel like, I mean, she was just trying to get, I don't know, maybe some more information about, you know, this whole party boy label that's been put on him. But I don't understand why he's saying he feels a disconnect. I don't feel like she was disrespectful or anything. And I don't know, I guess he's just tired of hearing it, but 
there probably wasn't nothing between them anyway. So maybe it's just best that they move forward. So anyway, y'all, it's the next day. It's the day of the pajama party and everybody arrives. So everybody's just kicking it. They're drinking, talking, and just having a good time. So we see a scene where Alexis and Jonathan are sitting down talking, right? So he says to her that, you know, I just feel comfortable around you and I feel like I can talk to you. So y'all, as soon as he's saying this, right? He tells Alexis, you know, I like you. And if I can stay with you all night, I would. I know that's right. <laughs> I know that's right. And I was like, go ahead, Jonathan. Lay that game down, boy. I see you. It's so funny because I didn't, I thought he was, I don't know, y'all. Y'all correct me if I'm wrong. I thought he was feeling Maya more. I'm trying to figure out where did him and Alexis come from? I don't even honestly remember seeing them kind of really talk to each other. I don't know. So this one was a shock to me. Maybe it's because they just didn't show us, you know, their scenes together. But I was kind of shocked because I didn't think that they were even talking like that. So anyway, um, Alexis says thank you to him. And in her confessional, she says that he has a beautiful spirit, but you know, he is a bit reserved and she kind of kind of want to see like, what's up with him? Like kind of want to get to know him more. So at the party, we now see Dominique and Mika talking and she asks him, you know, does he have a lot of friends here? So he says, you know, no, not a lot, but you know, I wasn't always ready for a relationship. So he says, you know, in the past, I didn't believe in dating anyone if I can't see something with them. So they start talking and Mika says that she has kids, um, and that she had them at a very young age. And she says, you know, do you want kids? And he says that he wants to be a father because he feels like it's what he's here to do. So in Mika's confessional, she's like, you know, I don't want any more kids. And, you know, I'd be letting these guys know from the beginning that I don't want children. So Mika does let Dom know and I'm, I'm just calling him Dom, y'all. It's really Dominique. So she lets Dom know that she doesn't see herself having any more kids. And he says that, you know, she's not really what he's looking for, um, you know, because she doesn't want kids. And y'all know him. Uh, Mr. Dom wants about two to 10 kids. So that darn sure ain't going to work. So, but then he going to say in his confessional that he wants to peel back the layers and still talk to Mia because they like each other. And I'm like, why are you doing that? Because one, you're going to make it even harder for you to kind of get over her and pull yourself away from her the more you talk to her because you're going to just like her even more. My thing is this, um, Dom, you guys are unequally yoked. She does not want more kids. You want kids. You cannot be with somebody who doesn't want children. That's a really huge deal breaker in a relationship. So you might as well just cut it off now so that you don't get too deep with it. And if you think you're going to change her mind, it's not most likely not going to happen. Absolutely not. Not me. Certainly not I. And people always kind of think that they'll get with somebody who doesn't want children and they don't. And they think, oh, if I put in the work, the years and time, they may change their mind. It's like a lot of times that's not the case. So I would advise him to just, you know get his focus somewhere else. Man, anyway, let me get off this tangent. So in a new scene, we see Koshia talking to Justin outside, right? <laughs> Yo, this scene was funny. Okay. So Koshia is kind of flirting with Justin, right? And Laron keeps looking at them. <laughs> so because y'all know that Koshia and Laron are talking, right? So in Laurent's confessional, he says that he felt the energy between he and Koshia at the brunch, but, and you know, they were like talking on the phone for hours, but lately she's been like kind of secretive. So he says, you know, maybe she made a conscious decision to stop rocking with them. <laughs> so that, that's all going on, right? So Tommy comes outside and he tells um, everybody that he wants everyone to mix and mingle. And he lets them know that the men have the power this week um, to send someone home. And so he says, by the end of their pajama party, 
Only one woman's journey will come to a close. So of course, everybody's like freaking out, like, oh gosh, somebody's about to get eliminated tonight and let it not be me, okay? So <laughs> we jump on over to see Rashina and she's talking to Will or whatever. And um, she asks him, you know, have you been doing all right? And he says, well, you know, I got some ops and these ops are saying that I sleep on the floor and I don't know who, who it is saying this. So he says that during the party, he was going around saying to the ladies that someone said he was sleeping on the floor. And he said, whenever he would tell them that if they like didn't have this particular reaction, then he knew that wasn't the person. So y'all, Will is Inspector Gadget. Honey, he's going on a campaign to find out who in the world is going around saying that I sleep on the floor and basically calling me broke. And that's not cool. And I can understand him being upset because, I mean, you know, for real, let's, let's be honest. Nobody wants to be known for that, especially if it's not even true. So, yeah, so he starts going around the ladies asking, you know, telling them about that whole thing. So um, at this point, Will is now sitting down with Patrice and he's basically asking her the same thing. Like, who said that I was sleeping on the floor? So <laughs> at this point, Patrice is making a face like, oh gosh. But she came right on out with it. And she says, um, you know, basically when we talked, you told me that you were taking your covers and sleeping on the floor. So Will says, I never said I was sleeping on the floor and you misinterpret that. Hold on, wait, let me fix my wig and myself because I'm so tired of everybody talking about some hold on and that's not the case so then he lets her know that you know i feel some type of way about it because you know you're going around telling people that and that's not true and so patrice is like well that was um our exact conversation and he said no it wasn't so he says at what point did i say that and so at this point will is just annoyed patrice because you know, she's going around telling that and he's saying it's not true. That's not the conversation we had. So y'all, I don't know what that is. And so Will says to her, he says, first of all, I don't have to sleep on the floor. I'm a multimillionaire. So I was like, oh, okay, Will. Okay, shut my mouth wide open. Let me stop. <laughs> so next we see Mika and Justin talking, right? So he tells her what he does for a living and she asks him, you know, does he have children? And he tells her no. So Mika asks him, you know, well, do you want kids? And he says, I do, but I've made peace with myself if I wasn't to have kids. And so he lets her know that he's open to dating someone with children. And, you know, Mika reveals to him that she has a boy and a girl ages 18 and 6. So at this point, basically him telling her, you know, I'm cool with not having kids. That was like music to her ears. And so she got all perky in her uh, confessional saying like, you know, it's about time I meet somebody who don't want no kids. So anyway, in a new scene, we see Jonathan Koshia talking and, and LaRon comes over and he interrupts him like, you know, hey man, can I, you know, talk to her? So he's like, you know, I need one-on-one -on -one time with Koshia. So him and Koshia go into the house and they sit down at a table, right? So he says to her, he says, you know, I text you and you were being very mysterious, which you've never done to me. And you haven't been hitting me up until it was time to come here. Like you kind of shut me off. So she's like, you know, Laron, like, you know, you're right. You know, you're correct. And then LeBron going to tell her, he says, yeah, and I see how you be smiling in dudes' faces. And she starts laughing. She's like, wait a minute, what? So at this point, LeBron is getting heated. And my thing is this, you know, let me, let me wait. I'm, I'm not going to say that part yet. Y'all, y'all will hear my commentary on what I think about this scene. So anyway, y'all, she starts laughing. So coach, she is like, can I hold your hand? And he's like, no, like he was so mad. So he says to her, he's like, you know, you've been acting a fool because, you know, you've been smiling in these dudes' faces. 
So as they're having this conversation, right, Maya walks over to the table and she sits down. And so Laron starts talking to her and making her laugh. And you can tell, like, at this point, Koshi is, like, kind of getting heated. And so Koshi is like, oh, so you're making her giggle. So this is where the game playing starts. So y'all check this out, right? So Maya says to Laron, you know, you're a party boy. So he gets up from the table and he goes over to her and starts hugging her and telling her, you know, stop saying that. So y'all, basically, this is what I'm talking about, the game plan. So basically, he was trying to make Koshia jealous by going over to Maya, giving her a hug, being all flirtatious in her face. And my thing is this, why are you even doing that? It's very childish and very immature. So anyway... Koshia and Laron, they get into an argument. They start going back and forth at the table. And then all of a sudden, Koshia starts crying. Play with your mama, not me. And that song, who? That song, Mary Had a Little Lamb. I'm tired. And I think that even made Laron even more upset um, because he just gets up and he starts walking away from the table. So I'm just like, instead of you guys just having a conversation saying like, hey, you know, I really like you. You know, I'm starting to develop some type of feelings. You know, I will say I don't really like it that I see you talking to other dudes. But my thing is this, like, Laron, you can't even talk because on last week's episode, you was all up on Maya. And my thing is this, this is a dating show. You're here to get to know multiple people, not really just stick to one, especially so early in the process. And my thing is, you can't harp on her for talking to other men and you're talking to other women. That's what you guys are supposed to do. So I, I don't, yeah, my thing is, if you can't handle um, dating where the person that you are talking to is dating other people as well, then you don't need to be on this show because... You know, people have real feelings. You get kind of jealous. It's just human nature. It is what it is. You don't want to see the person you really like hitting it off with another person. That's just human nature. But anyway, um, so yeah. So Laron gets up from the table, child, and walks away. And so Chaz goes up to Laron and he tells him that he was being dismissive towards Koshia. And Laron is like, well, that's because it was BS. So Chaz says, you know, at some point in time, I was not a, I was not good at listening and it kept me single and we as men have to get better at listening. So Laurent says, I was listening and what I heard was BS. So Laurent just doesn't care what anybody's saying. He's just heated. So Chaz says, you know, this process makes us talk to everybody, but you have to be secure. And that's true. You got to be secure when you're dating, especially if the person you're dating is dating other people. Like, anyway. So, um, basically, Chaz just tells him, you know, Koshi is in there crying. And the reason why she's probably doing that is because she really does genuinely have feelings for you. Because if she didn't, it wouldn't make her this upset. So, you know, at this point, Justin comes out of the house and goes to where they are too, right? And so Justin says, you know, if a woman is crying, that has to be some kind of connection there. So Laurent hears them out, but at this point, he's still heated and he just needed time to himself to blow off some steam. So basically, he was still outside. So next, we see everybody all gathered in the living room, the guys and the girls, and they are all going to play a game called truth and sexy, something like that. Basically, I think the gist of the game is um, you either have to, you know, it's like truth or dare. You either have to tell a truth. Um, if you don't, you have to pick a dare and like do something sexy. It's, it's something like that. I never heard of it, but whatever. So everybody starts playing the game, right? So Laron tells Jonathan to say sweet nothings in his strongest connections ear. So Jonathan gets up, brings Alexis towards him, and then he starts lifting her up on him. And just by the angle from what I was seeing, I don't know if he was like kissing her ear or her neck, but that's what it looked like because I was, I don't know if I was 
I don't know. I think I was watching his mouth movements, but I'm not too sure. Don't quote me on that. But it did look like he was like kissing on the side of her. And child, she was just, you know, like, oh my gosh, I can't believe he's doing that. I think in a way it kind of made her uncomfortable because, you know, he was coming on strong, honey. He was just like pulling her into him and she's like, oh my gosh. And he was doing that in front of everybody. So, um, yeah, so we learn in her confessional, she says that it was like really awkward when he did that. So anyway, everybody's having fun. They finished playing the game and Tommy comes in and he tells them that he has to talk to the guys. So we already know y'all what that means. It's elimination time. So the women go in a different room and, um, Tommy asks the men, who do you see a connection and chemistry with? So Jonathan says that he feels it with Alexis and Will says that he feels um, Alexis as well, their connection. And even Dominique said he has a connection with Alexis. So I'm trying to figure out like where are all these random guys coming from that are feeling Alexis? I'm like, they must have had dates that own has not shown us like the production. So, cause I was even shocked with Dominique. I'm like, oh really? Oh, okay. So anyway, Chaz says his strongest connection is Vanessa, and Alonso says it's Patrice, and William says that it's Maya. So Justin says he likes Mika, and Laurent says that he wants Koshia, of course, because what they have is real. So Tommy then asks them, well, who's not ready to love? And Jonathan, Chaz, and William say Mika. So Justin says, Vanessa, and then Laron says, Alexis. So they're just all giving their votes or whatever, not votes, but their, their statements about who they don't have a connection with. So Dominique says, Koshia, um, you know, that's just not for him in a romantic way. And then Will and, Laz uh, Will and Alonzo ooh, says that basically Koshia is not my connection as well. So basically they all make a decision about who they're going to eliminate and we're about to find out, right? So in a new scene, we see Tommy go outside. He gathers all of the singles around him and he asks Will, you know, to please come to the front so that you can deliberate. I mean, not deliberate, y'all. So that you can deliver the news to the woman who they're going to eliminate. So Will steps forward and says that this was a tough decision, but one of you ladies must go home. So he tells Mika and Koshia to come forward, and they do. And he tells Mika that she gives off homey vibes to the fellas. And then he tells Koshia that what is off-putting to the guys is the chatter that they've heard regarding her. And so then he says, you know, we just think that and scene. So yeah, y'all, that's where the episode ends. It's on a darn cliffhanger. So we don't know who got eliminated on this episode, but we're going to find out next week. For some reason, I have a feeling that no one's going home. I feel like they're just trying to throw us off. I don't know why, but I feel like no one's going home. So yeah, y'all, that is where the episode ends. And we're going to find out in the new episode who's gone home or if anybody gone home, really. So anyway, y'all, thank you so much for tuning in to my recap. You know, tell me guys, you know, what you guys thought. You know, definitely please like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so that you can be informed whenever I upload a new video. Also, too, comment below. Tell me your thoughts on this week's episode um oh yeah i forgot to give it a rating y'all i would give this episode hmm i give it a i give it a i'll give it an eight it was it was like you know what no i'm gonna give it a 7.5 it was all right it was all right it wasn't like you know like oh my gosh it was so good it was cool so anyway yeah y'all and comment below too if i haven't said that so thank you guys so much. And you guys already know, I love to say a prayer for you before you go. And so here it goes. So may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. 
May the Lord turn toward uh I'm sorry y'all messing up my prayer. May the Lord turn his face towards you and give you his peace and protection. This is my prayer over your life in Jesus name. Amen. Take, take care everyone and I will see you in my next recap. And yeah, bye.